Hey there Canaanites, today I'm bringing you something of a filler video while I'm out of town. Today we're going over the locations of the special wreck items found in the Halo 5 campaign, the lore behind them, and a brief discussion on whether their appearances are canon. First up is the level Osiris, starting off with open hand. The special bolt shot can be found where you encounter the two Promethean soldiers. Rather than following them, go up here to the left and climb onto this ridge. Hug the right side while moving forward and you'll find open hand. The weapon is the right hand of Endurance of Will, the Didax Loyal Lieutenant. It's an advanced bolt shot that fires a swarm of tracking bolts with each press of the trigger. Endurance of Will was indeed loyal to the Didact, but also allowed the Librarian to lock him in a cryptum and leave an imprint of herself on Requiem. Like her fellow Prometheans, however, she composed herself and became a Promethean Knight. A simulation of her appears in the Warzone scenario, Skirmish at Darkstar. Next up is Loathsome Thing. This weapon is found right by where you first see the Kraken. Walk straight forward and just over the cliff is the Scattershot. Staying in the ichor of uncountable foul parasites, slain in a hundred thousand wretched hives. Loathsome Thing is an improved Scattershot with increased damage, a faster rate of fire, and an extended magazine. After that we have the level blue team which features Blaze of Glory. Right before you encounter the hunters on the bridge, come over to this structure here, clamber up, hop over the gap, and hidden on your right is the Blaze of Glory. Advanced technology married to brutal simplicity. The Blaze of Glory is an advanced shotgun with a forerunner mechanism to fire fast moving hard light projectiles with extra range and an anti-vehicle effect. Reloads with a single shell. Here's where we really get into the debate on the canonicity of these wreck weapons and the descriptions in general. Argent Moon went missing in March of 2557, four months before the Requiem event which saw the UNSC's first encounter with the Prometheans, and the Blaze of Glory does seem very Promethean in its operation. Of course, it's always possible that Oni discovered a Promethean or Forerunner weapon that used hard light and, keeping it secret, started development on a new weapon with it. I mean, Argent Moon was home to a number of projects, so finding the Blaze of Glory there isn't all that strange. What is strange is its ability to reload with a single shell. What space magic is this, I hear someone asking. To me, what's going on here is a single shell contains all five hard light rounds that the special shotgun fires. Next up is level 5, unconfirmed, which features Norfang. Norfang, Linda's sniper rifle, can be found inside the prowler blue team used to get to Meridian. A mastercrafted instrument of death and destruction, Norfang is a special sniper rifle customized by Spartan Linda. It fires high explosive armor piercing rounds that increase overall damage. In addition, Linda's modifications ensure the motion tracker is visible even when using the zoom. Now, considering that Linda is seen carrying her Norfang throughout the campaign, it would seem to heavily indicate that the appearance of Norfang is non-canon. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the other weapons are non-canon, 343 could always decide that some are and some aren't. However, I have a feeling that the answer is going to be one or the other. If all the weapons are canon, that makes me wonder why Norfang was left on the Prowler. Maybe she made a new one. Next up is Reunion, which features a number of weapons, first being the Talon of the Lost. This is found in the area with the second encounter with the Covenant. Come up to the right side here, and down in this little crevice is the Talon of the Lost. Sangheili miners and engineers continue to discover amazing new properties of the Sudanese crystals used in Needler ammunition. Talon of the Lost is an advanced Needler that fires carefully calibrated shards that can embed themselves in armor. That last bit used to confuse me since, as far as we know, all Needler rounds always can embed in armor, but I'm pretty sure they're talking about vehicle armor. After that we have Pool of Radiance. This weapon is right after the second elevator, right before the second cutscene of the level. If you come over to the right side, climb up as high as you can, you'll find the Pool of Radiance. Both the Swords of Sanghelios and Covenant Forces use once forbidden armaments in their bloody civil war. This advanced fuel rod cannon fires unstable projectiles that leave a dangerous residue in their impact area. Next up is the River of Light. This weapon is found in the area where you first fight the Warden. If you run right past him just a bit, in the right cliff face you'll see a small hole which contains the River of Light. The war against the Flood led to many technological advances. All proved fruitless. This improved incineration cannon will unleash a long burst of energy blasts if allowed to charge up by holding the firing trigger. Finally, we have Twin Jewels of Maithrilion. This special binary rifle is found in the area where you can take either the Phaetons or run along the ground. 
Taking the ground path, run until you see this rock structure here. It won't be like that, John. I'll explain it better once we're together. The gateway is on Climb up to the top and obtain the twin jewels of Maithrillion. To stop you. you can slide these phaetons across the canyon or take footpaths to reach the other side. All right, blue team. A twin missing its sibling. This advanced binary rifle is modified with dual beam emitters that enhance the rifle's anti-armor utility. Gotta wonder what the twin is like. Also, fun fact, Maithrillion is the name of the Forerunner Capital World and the destination Ro Barutami hoped the artifacts on Reach would lead him to. Up next is the level Genesis. Kind of sad that there aren't any special weapons on Sanghelios. But speaking of Sanghelios, the first weapon is Light of Ores. The weapon is found in this area here before you head through those doors. Head back instead and around this corner next to Kit Pitlim's body is the Light of Ores. The war on Sun Helios has led to unprecedented advances in fuel rod technology. This improved fuel rod cannon fires faster moving projectiles that do more damage. It's fun to use, but would have been more fun, I think, if found on Sun Helios. Next is Spitfire. Spitfire is found in the very next area. You can see the Wraith Ultras back there and the Guardians slipping in there. Just speed to the left past the enemies and you'll find Spitfire. The skill and finesse of Kigyar Armorer should never be underestimated. The Spitfire is an improved plasma pistol that overcharges faster and does not overheat. Kind of cool, an improved weapon that's been improved by the Kigyar. After that we have my favorite, the Answer. This is found right before your final encounter with the Warden at the end of the level. One is to the right of the bridge, the other under the crashed Pelican. Inquiring sentiments want to know, this advanced saw has a slightly lower rate of fire, but each projectile has a proximity-fused high-explosive warhead. Basically, enemies be fucked. Next up is the breaking, which features the other special scatter shot in Halo 5. It can be found during the section with the winding walkways. Just after the first floor, you come to the right here. On top of the center structure is the Didax Signet. Made by the Didax's own hand to reward his most elite Prometheans, this advanced scattershot fires fast-moving, long-range projectiles with stronger homing behavior after ricochets. This is another canon curiosity. If Genesis is a builder world, why is a Promethean weapon present? Of course, given the Warden's apparent connection with the Prometheans and the heavy presence of them, it's possible that one of these signets just found its way here. Finally, we end on Guardians. First weapon is White Scar. This weapon is found in the first area where you encounter enemies. Just short of the center, behind this piece of crashed phantom, is White Scar. There is little honor to be found in Slaughter, but that's enough for some. This advanced plasma caster fires modified bolts, set to proximity detonate if hip fired, and have a needler fragmentation effect. After that, we have Vorpal Talon. This special energy sword is found in the area with the first gravity core. On the wall opposite from where you enter, climb up that cliff and you'll find Vorpal Talon. Light as a feather when wielded with unrestrained malice, this advanced energy sword provides additional thruster hang time and two thruster evades per cooldown. What I personally find most curious is the notion of it augmenting a Spartan's thrusting ability. How, and perhaps just as puzzling, why? Why would the Sangheili develop a blade that augments Spartan abilities? unless it's made to work specifically with the Sangheili Ranger Harnesses, which do feature thrusters. Finally, we have another Twin Jewels of Maithrillion. The second of these weapons is found by the Epsilon Gravity Core. Stick to the left of the core, and on the cliff you'll see the second twin. Another grav core on my position. Shut it down. I have to wonder if the description for this thing, which calls it a twin missing its sibling, literally means that there are only two of these. And that does it for this video. I loved finding these weapons throughout the campaign as it allowed encounters to become more diverse and a few were a major help on Legendary. Hopefully in the near future, 343 can comment on whether the appearances of these weapons in the campaign are canon or not, but what do you guys think? Also, I've heard rumors that there are other weapons that can be found in the campaign. Let me know if you've had luck finding any that weren't listed here. And yes, I know about the Prophet's Bane easter egg, I purposely left that out. Anyway, until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Perfect. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. 
No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.